Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Last week, we spoke about Jesus going to the Garden of Gethsemane and praying there that God's will will be done and His will will not be done. We learned that that's the same way we should pray because God knows best. God's know, God knows what is best for us. So it's better when we're asking for something, we say rather that God's will be done rather than my own. And then we heard of Jesus being arrested. Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss and then they grab Jesus and they arrest him. So today we hear what happens afterwards. So Jesus is arrested and he has to come in a trial before some Jewish leaders and also some Roman leaders and eventually they condemn him to be crucified. And as we've said before, to be crucified was a terrible death in that day and time because it was very embarrassing as well, humiliating. It was the most humiliating death. Um, but Jesus suffered much more because he was carrying much more. So let's see what is happening with Jesus so, of course, we read out of the Bible, God's Word. God is speaking to us, and here He is speaking to us through His Son, Jesus. And we will read from the book of Mark, chapter 15. first bit is from verse 22 to verse 32. Mark 15, from verses 22 to verses 32 and of course we read out of the new international readers version you can find that on the U version app they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha the word Golgotha means the place of the skull then they gave him wine mixed with spices but he did not take it they nailed him to the cross then they divided up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each of them would get. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. They wrote out the charge against him. It read, the king of the Jews. They crucified him with two rebels against Rome. One was on his right and one was on his left. Those who passed by shouted at Jesus and made fun of him. They shook their heads and said, So you are going to destroy the temple and build it again in three days? Then come down from the cross. Save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law made fun of him among themselves. He saved others, they said but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross. When we see that, we will believe. Those who were being crucified with Jesus also made fun of him. Then we'll read from the same chapter, Mark 15, from verses 33 to 34, and then verses 37 to 39. Chapter 15, verses 33 to 34, and then from verses 37 to 39. At noon, darkness covered the whole land. It lasted three hours. At three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? And this is from Psalm 22, verse 1. He's fulfilling scripture. With a loud cry, Jesus took his last breath. The temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. 
a Roman commander was standing there in front of Jesus. He saw how Jesus died. Then he said, This man was surely the Son of God. So a few Sundays ago already, we learned that Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to die. And here we see that he dies on the cross as he promised them would happen. And then we see people making fun of him. And they're saying, you should come down from the cross. You should save yourself. Um, you're the king of the Jews, but you can't even save yourself. And you're saying, they're saying that if he comes down from the cross, then they will believe him. And the interesting thing about this is that actually, while it seems like Jesus is doing nothing, it looks like he's helpless, he's on the cross, he's dying. He is actually not helpless. He can summon angels at any moment and say, okay, come, um, because he is God. He does it willingly. He's willingly on the cross, dying. And the actual thing is that while he is there on the cross, while it seems like he's doing nothing, he's actually doing everything. And they're saying that he saved others, but he can't save himself. He's actually saving all of his people while he is on the cross. And they're saying that if he comes down, then they'll believe. But actually, we can believe because Jesus stayed on the cross. How amazing is that? And we, we hear also later in the scripture that Jesus is fulfilling a scripture from the Psalms where David cried out and said, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? Why have you forsaken me? Um, and Jesus says that and through that he also fulfills scripture and in that way fulfills promises. So, boys and girls, then we have this Roman commander um, towards the end of today's story and he sees how Jesus dies and he says, this man was surely the son of God and he believes in Jesus. So what can we remember of what Jesus does while he is on the cross? So he's not simply dying, being crucified, but while he is on the cross, he is carrying the sins of all his people, of the whole world. It is on his shoulders as if he actually committed those sins. And then, as we see later on, he is also deserted by God. God forsakes him. And we can see how it becomes dark. It becomes really dark. And Jesus is also drinking, we say, drinking the cup of wrath of God. The anger of God. It's not anger as us humans would be and we throw a tantrum. It's righteous anger for the sin of the whole world. And instead of it falling on us, it falls on on Jesus and through this death on the cross our sins are forgiven the wrath of God is satisfied we can be friends with Jesus and as we said we can be friends with others as well but the story does not end here next week we will speak about Jesus's resurrection which is very very important because if Jesus did not rise from the dead we would have absolutely nothing to believe in but let's first close our eyes and thank Jesus for what he did for us on the cross that he stayed on the cross that he did everything for us let's close our eyes Lord Jesus we thank you so much that you stayed on the cross that you died willingly for our sins, taking on the wrath of God so we could be forgiven, so that we can be in relationship with you and that we can be in relationship with others. 
and also that we can look forward to life everlasting just as you were resurrected from the dead as well. We thank all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's for today, boys and girls. Next week, we'll hear about Jesus' resurrection, which is very important, so you don't want to miss that. Well, I will see you then. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh.